Hey guys, so today we're gonna to be talking all about Westman Atelier. I purchased this line when it was first introduced to the world, uh, I believe back in August, maybe uh, July or August last year. And I did a whole dedicated video, which I will try and remember to link up here. If not, I'll put it down below in my description box. And in my video, I talk about how much I enjoy all the pieces. None of that has changed. But since then, they've actually come out with three makeup brushes. So I've been playing around with these and I wanted to talk about these and then actually apply all the makeup on my face with these brushes. And then I also wanted to share with you um, an application I guess you could call it a technique. It's more like the order in which you put the products on your face. Uh, something that Natalie over at Flower Bomb shared with me. She was actually at the Barneys here in Vegas when she came to visit, and the sales associate actually showed her how she could utilize two products like in a different order than what how I'd been using it, how she assumed you would use it, and it's really made a, a very big difference. We're gonna get into all of that, you know, the application, this technique, um, using the brushes and everything, but I do just wanna say a few words about these brushes before we jump into the actual application of the makeup. So she's come out with three brushes, and this is the blender brush. It's like a flat top kabuki style brush. This is the, I believe it's the powder brush. The name of it is actually covered up by the price tag right here. And I'll have you know a link to everything down below in my description box with the prices and the proper names for everything. Um, but I believe this is the powder brush. And then this is the foundation brush. Now all of these brushes are synthetic haired and they were all handmade in Japan. And they come packaged beautifully. They all come in this paper, like almost mini size mailing tube. It has the Westman Atelier printed on there in gold. It has the heart logo on the top. And then inside the tube at the bottom, you probably can't, oh, maybe you can see it. There's like a little foam insert in there. So your brush actually stands in the middle. So it's not kind of rattling around in the tube. It's really well thought out. Very, very beautiful. The blender brush comes in a black tube. The powder brush comes in a gray tube and the foundation brush comes in a white tube. And the white tube doesn't have the gold printing. It actually has like an embossing of Westman Atelier on there. You probably can't see it with the light. So far, I have been very much enjoying these brushes. As you guys know, I definitely prefer natural hair brushes to synthetic hair brushes. And I do wanna say that first, there has been like zero shedding, like no shedding at all. So that is definitely a plus. And then the other thing I wanna mention about all of the brushes is that they're very short. The handles are very, very short. I would prefer them to be just a little bit longer, but I know that's really just personal preference. I don't, it's not like a, I'm not trying to say anything disparaging about these brushes or the brand. Just for me personally, I would like them to be a little bit longer. So I happen to have my Sonia G Face One brush sitting here, and here is a difference between the handle lengths. So it's a good amount different. I wanna say probably about an inch and a half. Uh, but then I also feel like they're not short enough to actually be like travel brushes, you know, to be like a mini version of brushes. So to me, they're just kind of uh, an interesting uh, handle length. I really like the uh, packaging, I guess you could say, of the brushes. I like the matte black ferrules, and then I like the glossy black handles. I think that's a really nice juxtaposition of the two blacks. It's really pretty, but yet it's still very sleek and modern. So I like that very much as well. Oh, what I also want to mention is that all the names, so the brand name, Westman Atelier, and the type of brush it is, so here it says blender, is actually engraved into the handles. And I really appreciate that. I have a lot of like um, Hakuhodo brushes where it's just printed on and it wears off after time. And while, you know, the name of the brush isn't that big of a deal, um, I would prefer to know <laughs> the name of the brush that I'm using in case I wanna, I don't know, order it again, refer to it for you guys. So I really like the fact that this is engraved. It's just, it's never gonna wear off. There's nothing to wear off. So just a few quick thoughts on the blender brush. It is incredibly soft. It's definitely on the denser side. You can probably see how many bristles are in there. But what I wanna show you is that they're kind of malleable. So if I run my finger this way, look at how the brushes like lean this way. And then when I do this, they lean that way. So even though they're dense and I'm not the biggest fan of like super dense kabuki brushes because I feel like they either move what's underneath or they just end up moving your product around. It doesn't actually blend it around. The fact that these are really, really soft and kind of go with your motion, I feel like it doesn't, it doesn't do that. It doesn't like 
just move your product around. I do really feel like this blends product in really, really beautifully. The downside to this really soft, densely packed bristle is that it's difficult to clean. This one I have found hard to clean and not not so much to get clean, but to actually end up like rinsing all of the soap and the water out. I just find that it takes a lot longer. It's almost like things get caught in there. So that has been my experience with this brush. I really like using it. I don't really like cleaning it. <laughs> All right, next, just a few quick thoughts about this uh, foundation brush. Whenever I've used a brush shaped like this in the past, they've always been synthetic hair. So I didn't feel like there was, I don't know, that much of I don't know, either a learning curve or anything for me to get used to because it's not like I've ever used a natural hair brush for this. So I think this brush shape really lends itself to synthetic hairs and it works it worked fine. It worked really, really well just to kind of like lay down cream products. And this seemed like a very natural brush for her to create because so many of her products are cream products. So this has worked out really well for me. And then just some quick thoughts about the powder brush. So this one I actually purchased after I purchased these two because she has so many cream and well, not liquid, but cream products in her line. Uh, these two I felt like made sense. And then this is more of like a traditionally shaped powder brush. And I thought eh, I could probably skip that one but I really enjoyed using these two so much that I decided to pick this one up as well so I've only used this one once and washed it once and it works really well the hairs are really really soft but I felt like there was a little bit of grip to them too that's generally my issue with synthetic fibers is that they're just too slick they're too soft they don't actually like grab onto any product so whenever you use them it's sort of like you plop product down and then you spend the rest of the time blending it out where with natural hairs um, it kind of lays down the product in a more even way. There isn't that like plop factor in the beginning. So while I don't have much experience with this brush, I am enjoying it very much. It did wash really well, as you can see, unlike, unlike this guy, which is like really, really dense and hard to clean. This one is lighter, it's fluffier, much easier to clean. I've spot cleaned it and I've also cleaned it with like soap and water really beautiful. So this one I really enjoy and I feel like with more washes this one is going to just kind of fluff up even a little bit more. So that's the powder brush. Let's go ahead and actually apply some makeup to this face. Let's go ahead and start with foundation. So there's no primer in this collection and that one tip that I've been mentioning that Natalie over at Flower Bomb 31, definitely check out her channel if you haven't, but Natalie um, shared with me that she learned from the sales associate over at Barney's was to use the highlighting stick as a kind of primer if you wanted a little bit more of a glowy look to the foundation. So the foundation is a foundation stick and it has a very like soft matte kind of natural skin like finish. It's not flat matte, it's not dewy in any way. It's just very skin-like. I like this foundation by itself. I think it has very good longevity. I think it has very decent coverage. It's buildable. But for me, someone with really dry skin, I always kind of opt for and lean towards uh, foundations or base products that have a little bit of radiance. So when this sales associate mentioned using the lit up highlight stick and putting it down first and using this as a primer and then going in with the foundation stick that it'll make the foundation just a little bit more radiant, a little bit more glowy. I was like, that is genius. I am doing that immediately. So I've done this a couple of times. It is incredibly successful. It makes this foundation, which again is very natural and very skin-like, it just makes it a little bit more luminous. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the um, highlight stick down first. And this highlight stick, it looks like nothing in the stick. It looks like it's gonna be like a clear bomb, but it actually has a little bit of like a iridescent shift. Let me just put it on and see if you guys can see it. But yeah, do you see that? It kind of does like a cool toned, like purpley blue kind of effect. Of course, when you kind of slather the foundation on top of it, you're not really gonna see that duochrome shift too much. It'll mix in the foundation a little bit, but you can also use this over foundation as actual highlighter. So um, I'm just gonna kind of put this on generously uh, where I would normally highlight. And this has a great, very kind of like creamy, balmy feel to it. You can pretty much see where I've put it on my face. And I'm just gonna take the foundation brush and just kind of spread it out a little bit. I don't need to blend it in per se. And now I'm gonna go ahead and 
stripe the foundation onto my face as I normally would. And I should mention, I have the shade Atelier One. I believe they've expanded the shade range since the initial launch. I don't know if it's actually happened yet or if it's about to, but I'm using Atelier One, which was part of the initial launch. And this line, I don't think I mentioned this, but this line is sold exclusively at Barney's. So now I'm gonna take the blender brush and I'm just going to blend. And I'm just using like a mixture of circular motions, sweeping motions. All right, there's the first very light layer of foundation. What I'm gonna do is take the foundation brush. I'm gonna sweep it across the actual stick and add it to areas where I need a little bit more help, like around my eyes and definitely around my nose. So there's the foundation down on top of the highlight stick. I don't know why I never thought to put this down before the foundation to give it a little bit more of a luminous look. It's something I think we do often, you know, like the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I have some other, you know, Tom Ford liquid or cream highlights. I don't know why. I don't know why I never thought to do it, but it really has made all the difference. If you watch my original Westman Atelier video, you will probably notice that that definitely has like a flatter, more skin-like kind of natural look to it, where this, it definitely has a little bit of a glow going on. So let's go ahead and move on to the contour. So this is the Face Trace Contour Stick um, in the colorway Biscuit. I think there's only one colorway. Let's go ahead and apply this stick contour. So this is the shade and this product is probably, I like it, I like this product, but it's probably my least favorite out of everything in her line. And I think it's because maybe this shade is even like almost bordering on too light for me. And it's fine if I just kind of leave it like this, but you can blend this away very easily and very, very quickly. And I've learned to kind of put on a pretty thick layer, which is what I just did. You can see how easily that blended out. I'm just really lightly kind of sweeping this brush over it. So it's pretty light for my skin tone. I think it works well if you're doing like a no makeup makeup kind of look. And I do think you can blend it away very, very quickly. So actually I'm gonna stop blending. I'm gonna stop blending there. So that is the contour stick. Let's go ahead and move over to the Baby Cheeks blush stick. So I believe there's four, either four or six shades, and I have Petal, and this is just kind of a neutral, maybe a little bit of a cooler tone kind of pink, and this is beautiful. I really like cream blushes in general, but this happens to be just a really pretty, pretty color. And unlike the contour stick, I don't feel like this blends away uh, too easily. So I'm gonna use the blender brush actually, and I'm just kind of uh, pressing and kind of flicking just ever so lightly. And it just blends right in. It's so pretty. I actually wanna pick up more shades in this, maybe one that's a little peachier. I think that would be a nice compliment to this one, but it gives you like the perfect flush. Again, if you're my skin tone, it gives you like the perfect flush and it blends in easily, but it doesn't blend away like the contour stick. So I really, really enjoy this as a blush stick. Now I've watched Gucci Westman's Instagram and she has a lot of videos where she's, you know, kind of talking about these products or just using them. And I think she's used this on her lips. I am not the biggest fan of this on my lips because it does have a little bit of like a powder finish and I don't like that feeling on my lips at all. I mean, I think if you're in a rush and you just need something really quick, or if you're packing for a trip and you have very little space, this could definitely do double duty. It's just not my preferred lip product because of that like kind of like final powder finish that this product gets. And in fact, speaking of that, one of my wish lists, if anyone over at Westman Atelier is watching, one of my wish lists would be lip gloss from her because again, she just loves to do such natural looks that I would just love to see some like natural, healthy, plumpy looking glosses from her. I think they would be beautiful. So anyway, that is the um, Baby Cheeks blush stick, again, in the shade Petal. Love it. Next up is a product that I have mentioned probably the most out of everything in this line because I love it 
the most. This is the Super Loaded Tinted Highlight in Peau de Peche. And this is a very glowy kind of highlight product, but as you can tell, it's fairly pigmented and it is definitely too deep for me to use as like a traditional highlight because this blush is so natural. It's kind of nice to add something like this if you just want like a little bit more kind of going on in the back there. So I've been using this uh, powder brush because this lays the product down in a really light way, uh, lighter than the foundation brush for sure. This will give you uh, more of a heavier kind of lay down. Um, and this is great for blending out. So sometimes I'll go in with this afterwards, but I like laying down the product with this brush because it's fluffier. Sorry, I don't think I mentioned this, but even though this comes in a compact and it kind of looks like powder, it is definitely more of a cream. It's like a cream to powder kind of formula. So I just brush the brush over across top of it and just place some back here, kind of where the blush and bronzer would meet. And I find that if I just go in like light layers, I don't even need to go in with a blender. It just sort of blends itself out. So this product, like many of her products, does double duty, if not triple duty. But if you, you know, just want to put a blush on and maybe you don't want to bother with highlight or you just don't have the time or you don't have the inclination to do so, you can just use this and you really get a nice flush of color and you also really get like a beautiful highlight going there. It's it's just, it's gorgeous. I love this product. And then again, we have the highlight stick, the lit up highlight stick in the color lit. And if you want, you know, you can add it a little bit. It's, it's sheer enough that you can just kind of dab it where you want maybe a little bit more glow, but it adds like a really pretty kind of glow. And then finally we have the Beauty Butter Powder Bronzer. Now this bronzer, when I first got it, it is, um, it's very soft. Uh, it's definitely a powder product, but it's, it's just, it was very, very soft in the pan. And as you can see, it's very warm. It's kind of deep in tone. And so it was definitely a product that I had to be very, very careful with. Because I think this product is kind of on the creamier side, it has developed, oh, you can see right there, it's developed hard pan and it's actually gotten kind of like hard in the pan, um, just in general, not just hard pan, not just that kind of slick top to it, but it's actually gotten a little bit less creamy. Um, maybe it's just dried out a little bit. And at first I was kind of disturbed. I was like, oh man, that's kind of a bummer, but I don't have to be quite as careful <laughs> with the product anymore. So it's actually kind of like a blessing in disguise that this has become like a drier product because anyway, I don't have to be as careful with it, but I do like to use a very big fluffy brush with this product because it is very warm. It is kind of deep for my skin tone. Um, and none of her brushes actually work for me actually work with this product. I mean, you could probably use this one, but I still feel like this is a little bit too small for how I like to use this bronzer. So I'm going to take my Tom Ford bronzer brush, which is like, the world's fluffiest brush. And I'm going to dip into this bronzer uh, lightly. I'm just going to just knock some off just in case. I'm just kind of uh, using this brush in a pouncing motion because I have so much like cream product down that I don't wanna go in just like swiping because I didn't put any powder down. But this has been working out nicely for me. Just kind of using this bronzer all over, giving me kind of an overall healthy kind of look. And then I'll just bring it down my neck. So since those are all the products that she has in her collection, she doesn't have any eyeshadow, eyeliner, eyebrow stuff, any lip stuff, or dedicated, I should say, because I think you can use many of these things in different ways. I am actually gonna go ahead and use the bronzer as eyeshadow, and I may throw on some of this um, super loaded tinted highlight also onto my eyes. But I'm gonna start with the bronzer, and I'm using my Isum S33 brush, and I'm just gonna kind of lightly just add this to where I want to add a little bit of dimension. So that is the bronzer on my eyes. I'm going to go ahead and actually tap some of this uh, loaded highlight uh, onto my lids right here. So that's it for my eyes. This basically on the inner to middle portion of my lid, the bronzer just on the outer portion of my lid and then into the crease socket area. 
I think it makes for a great kind of everyday look. But that is it. I need to do my eyebrows, maybe do some eyeliner and put some lips on and I'll be right back. All right, so I am done with my look. I will link everything that's on my face down below in my description box as I normally do. I just kind of wanted to wrap up this video and tell you how much I enjoy this makeup line. It is just like the essence of like no makeup makeup. It's so, so beautiful and I just, I really enjoy it and I like how so many of the things are in stick format it just really makes it easy so I feel like if you're into like the no makeup makeup look and if you're kind of like into makeup on the go or you travel a lot or you really just don't have a lot of time to put your makeup on I find that stick products really are just the easiest because it's it really is just like a swipe swipe and like blend it's so low maintenance and I'm really enjoying these brushes I really really enjoy the experience of using these brushes I felt like this one especially kind of felt like natural hair bristles. I didn't feel like when I use this with actual powder, not these cream products, I did feel like it laid down the product really, really nicely. You know, it wasn't like the plop and blend. So I'm very much enjoying the brushes. I love the makeup line. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Please comment down below if you have any questions about these products. And don't forget to subscribe down below. My giveaway is still going on. So I'll have a link to that down below as well. Don't forget to enter and I'll see you in my next video. Mm -hmm.